Captain Kate Pride and the mutant pirates of the Marauder are heading into a brand new era helmed by Steve Orlando. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into issue one together and find out what happens next, shall we? So then, as we join the book, Forgotten Mutant Fever Pitch is going absolutely nuclear in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. <laughs> Jackson Hole. The army has been dispatched to deal with the threat, and they're going to use new guy-rich weapons to put an end to Fever Pitch once and for all. Thankfully, Captain Kate Pride and the Marauder crew are here to help. If you'll recall, at the end of the Duggan series and in that annual from a couple months ago, Captain Kate and her crew had actually managed to gain way more independence from Emma Frost and the Hellfire Company. The former Shadow Cat used this freedom to bring some fresh blood onto her crew as well as redouble her efforts to help rescue mutants in need. And right now, that mutant in need just so happens to be Fever Pitch. Now, Emma just didn't let Kate go without a parting gift. She gave her a strange puzzle box. One that the White Queen had received all the way back during the original Hellfire Gala. This box is covered in Krakoan writing and addressed to Kate herself despite being maybe millions of years old. Keeping with the pirate theme, inside the box was a map and that map led Captain Kate to a secret peninsula somewhere on Krakoa, a place forgotten even by the sentient island itself. Why would that be? Well, it seems that this particular part of the island just so happens to be home to none other other than famous X-Men villain and Xavier twin sister Cassandra Nova. Nova, you'll recall, was the perpetrator behind all of those deaths on Genosha, which might explain why Professor X wants to keep her as far away from this new island community as possible. Nova claims up and down that she's mended her ways with the help of Jean Grey. She reached into her mind and fixed whatever the problem was, and besides, people like Apocalypse and Mr. Sinister have been given the chance to make good for Krakoa. So why shouldn't she be given given the same chance. In fact, Nova wants to join the crew of the Marauder. Keep in mind that one of the people who died on Genosha was also Kate Pride's father. In an appendices, the book also plays with the idea of whether or not Nova can really be considered a mutant as she is more of a sentient parasite that stole some DNA from Xavier's mother in utero. But by all accounts, she was born a mutant, so she counts and as such deserves to reap the benefits of Krakoa. And also, if we really want a state precedent, Mr. Sinister only manipulated his own genes into becoming a mutant, and well, they accept him. Now, why on earth would anyone ever entertain the idea of letting Cassandra Nova join their team? Well, with Apocalypse gone, she now officially is one of the oldest beings on the island, and with it comes packing some very interesting information. Nova says that somewhere deep in space, there is a stranded group of first-generation mutants who are being kept prisoner by the Shi'ar Empire. And because Captain Kate Bishop, Psylocke, Dawkin, and the others have sworn up and down to rescue any mutant in need, that includes them as well. So yes, for this newest run, the Marauders aren't just going to be regular mutant pirates, they're going to be mutant space pirates. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Aren't the Shi'ar one of the most steadfast allies to mutant kind? Doesn't Professor X's own daughter, Xandra, sit on the throne as their empress? Well, yes, but apparently this incident between the first generation of Arakai mutants and Shi'ar dates back so far, very few beings actually know about it. And when Xandra even so much as broaches the idea in court, she is met by someone of the Red Kin named Delphos. A secret order of Shi'ar warriors that outrank even the likes of Gladiator. Apparently, without even knowing it, our heroes have stepped into one of the greatest and most vast space conspiracies ever, the spilling of the first blood. Meaning that the Marauder just made themselves enemies of all Shi'ar kind. In fact, their ship isn't even in Imperial space all that long before they end up coming under attack by a dreadnought. They do some fancy flying and manage to escape only to get boarded anyway. And the person leading the charge against the Marauders just so happens to be Eric the Red, an even older space-faring X-Men villain. And it's on that note right there, the comic comes to a close, everyone. And so that was Marauder issue number one, a brand new fresh start for this book in the post-Hickman X-Men era. Overall, I thought it was pretty good. Not great, but good. I will admit my own bias. I have never actually enjoyed space-faring X-Men stories all that much. Yes, I know there are some truly undeniable classics out there, but it's just too great taste 
that never tasted great for me. Also, while this new issue is sold as a fresh jumping on point for Orlando's run on the Marauders, you should really pick up the annual from a couple months ago if you want to see actual individual members of the team being recruited. I certainly thought this was a good use for Cassandra Nova, one of those really powerful, really notable X-Men villains who's just been sitting in the wings waiting for a chance to take point, and here we have it. Seeing the book go from a swashbuckly seafaring pirate book to a swashbuckling space pirate book is also an organic twist on an old formula. Captain Kate also remains a really strong POV character, and I'm interested to see how she grows and evolves and takes a more central part in Krakoan society. The art on this one was sadly not my own personal cup of tea, and I hope it improves in the next couple issues. Overall, I'd give this one a 7 out of 10. Hey there, everyone. It's your old pal, Cave Jewel, and if you're seeing me right now, that means you watched to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink, wink. If you like my content, too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and, well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.